Hey, welcome back. Professor Mark Leone here. So now we're going to take this idea of gesture and we're going to do and work with extended gesture, meaning a little bit longer. And we're going to take that idea and we're going to add some value and tone. Uh, very general and rudimentary uh, separation of light and dark and make these gestures a little, little uh, sing a little bit more too, something you can do uh, as well. Here I'm working with uh, charcoal exclusively and also uh, uh, Carbothello pencil or, or pastel pencil uh, <clears throat> at the end a little bit uh, too as well. And uh, we can use those, and I'm using those on newsprint, so we can use those to to uh, uh, give some value again to the gesture. So we're doing our armature gesture here and then working volume very uh, shorthandedly, thinking volumetrically always, and then starting in on this very quick uh, gesture contour, quick sketching with uh, the figure. So really, again, no time for detail, but what we want to wind up with is as elegant as we can be, uh, is an impression of the pose that we're, we're getting from our model and getting that down on paper as succinctly uh, as we can with some value uh, tone in there. So working the head in through, coming around getting the facial features. You know, in, in one of the biggest attributes that you can start to develop is, is looking at some of your favorite artists throughout art history and if you can you know if you have a mentor um, in the classroom or out of the classroom that you can start to see draw kind of you know like I'm doing here but uh, but also that you can start to emulate some for a while and borrow some of their symbology um, it helps for me it was Harry Carmen at Art Center College of Design I studied there again from 93 to 97 and I had I worked uh, with uh, Harry Carmian uh, in two of his figure drawing classes and then also one painting course and it was highly intensive and I learned uh, quite a bit uh, from him from him in terms of figure drawing and like to emulate as best I can really his gesture uh, beautiful gesture contour style when I'm gesturing and then add things that I that I that I do more naturally to it um, as well. And so I, I encourage you to look at art history, your own mentors, or wherever you're at with that to help. So coming down the back now and thinking three dimensionally. Notice that I'm really pushing hard on the charcoal pencil. I'm using an extra soft. That might feel really weird for some of you because it's really, really soft. But I don't have to work very hard to get a mark. And then when I push down just a little harder, I can get a pretty rich, dark uh, charcoal mark in the contour line. But I'm concerned with a couple of things. Ac relative um, accuracy of the pose with some interpretation to push the artistic merits of the pose, sometimes longer uh, or more flourished in certain areas, uh, enhanced in areas. So it's not a complete exact replica. We're not making copies. We're making analysis of kinetic movement. That's important. But also the variety of marks that I can get with the pencil in contour line. I'm not just outlining. Notice I'm working inside and outside the model in defining form, defining the light on the model rudimentarily. Uh, and you can see it already starting to emerge with the pose here that we've got uh, in front of you. Steven, uh, one of our wonderful former students modeling um, in this particular project as we needed uh, models, so he was very gracious and kind to do that. Of course, we paid him to as well, but he probably would have done it for free, but we didn't want to do that. And so here you could see me find the shadow pattern and block that shadow pattern in. I don't have time to be uh, uh, too, uh, too stiff or too completely accurate. We want to get an impression of that in. It would be as accurate as we can to the model's anatomy, his movement. Um, this is a more academic approach to, to quick gesture contour rather than uh, sort of neo-expressionist or German expressionist or um, you know some kind of fantasy kind of gesturing. So you have to be careful on that. So we are staying with the confines of trying to be as accurate within that. So there is kind of a a a. a, a uh, a way to go too too far. If we made you know if we if we drew the head with too 
we do true heads or we had hydra coming out of the arms or or something along along that lines that would be too much so we're staying with a very academic approach and I, I encourage you to do that in warm-ups this technique is also great for warming up and uh, before you go into longer more slower poses so you can loosen up your eye and your hand uh, and it's a very intense process and I, I you know it, it, these are about 10 minutes I try to time myself it's most most of the time I do sometimes I'll go over sometimes they're less but these are intensely fast and even I felt very 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 um, stressed in, in, in a good kind of stress it wasn't like you know I'm gonna fail if I, if I don't make a good drawing or something of that nature but you know I wanted to keep it within that so I always had my eye on the clock um, uh, outside, just outside the, uh, the the focus of the camera, a little my, my obviously my cell phone, and I was want to make sure I get within that range and try to get it all in, and a little bit of the compositional background, just the rhythm and flow. So, you know, action, gesture, the uh, light pattern on the model, and being as accurately uh, ac accurate representationally as we possibly can and uh, getting some of that background to enhance the pose and not just leave any of our models floating notice how I cover coat the background because there's shadow back there and so it throws it all in shadow getting a little bit of the ground here the platform that we have him on already thinking about some of the rhythm and movement of the curtains and I just look for the dark patterns for the most part and try to find the rhythmic uh, uh, areas and add that to to the drawing so just kind of filling in the eye socket I'm not worried about getting him to look up yet that'll come later <coughs> excuse me just getting a little bit putting the focus back on the head with a little bit darker shadowing Hitting a few spots, a little darker in the head. Reclaiming the ear a bit. You're going, going really fast in through. Looking to get a, a good edged, clear edge representation with value and form. And also a little background. I'll separate the light and dark of the head a little bit further. Bring that focus to the, to the head. Now we'll, we'll come down and catch the leg and the knee. You know, we're going so fast, you've got to look quickly. Make, make a judgment, make an analysis, and it, it's etched in your short-term memory. It happens so fast, doesn't it? And the more you do over years, the more accurate you get. It's hard to be very accurate when you first start out. You're going to make a lot of what you think are aesthetic errors. Uh, I did, certainly, in, in my courses drawing courses and then later on after that but it got clearer and clearer over time so you need to give yourself some time and, and be a little bit patient that way too as well but they get better and better and yeah, I still have my my mentors I like borrowing this particular style in technique again from uh, uh, again Harry Carmian when I was at Art Center also Glenn Vilpu and Steve Houston those are those are artists that I borrow from a gesture kind of uh, style uh, they're just it's amazing what they can do with that 10 minutes and I've always felt you know a little inadequate how how uh, fast they can beautiful they can they can be but I haven't been a figurative professional artist for quite a long time so that's been been part of it too and that's that's exactly what I wanted but you know I can draw the figure really well and pass this out for information on to you guys so gesturing the foot it's a triangular wedge and I get the ball the top of the foot come back over down get a little bit of value I mark the value and then you are working with those toes I kind of feel like the, the feet are in a sock and I get that mark I always want to locate the big toe get that cleaner and clearer in the amount of time that I have left about 30 seconds or so and then get the gesture direction of each individual toe just a flow flow here right sometimes I don't even draw all the toes we want the impression of the foot sometimes that's enough <clears throat> hmm. now moving on to our next pose with Brevin here 
So a, a lovely uh, seated pose. We kind of got her, uh, looks like she's sleeping there. Uh, got her in between uh, blinks, looks like. And getting the oval, ovoid kind of structure of the head. I kind of conceive it as a quick box, but then a rounded ovoid for the side plane. Coming down the neck, locating the sternum there, the shoulder over to the axis tilt of the other shoulder. It's almost straight across. Feeling the design line down through the, the uh, abdomen to the lima beam. And over to the other hip, feeling that width around. And bringing down the lima beam, the width of the rib cage over to the leg, armature from the leg down. That little line I drew there was a horizontal, uh, a, line, a vertical alignment line. There's a horizontal diagonal one coming over to find the other knee. To bring those over, kind of show you that even more physical. The more line you make, the line makes it the more illustrative. We can I can show you that. And feeling where the elbow is, the other arm coming down, get those appendages out. I mean it's really fast, isn't it? It's coming blazingly fast. Then I'm going to start to tighten up the drawing a little bit quickly though. Working the head, the hairline, the eye, get a little brow in through. Find a little bit of the cheekbone. Get the chin located. It's a very fast, quick contour line that uses the idea of gesture since it's so fast. And I'm also thinking about volume and also blocking in light. Notice the palm method works very well for this technique. If you're not familiar with the palm method, really really watch how I hold the pencil. Um, that is a, a draftsman and draftswoman, for sure, uh, technique. And that we can use that broad stroking to, to mop in the value, get a little block in, and then use the finer points of the, of the uh, broad side up to the very tip to get tight line edges too as well in almost one effortless stroke. Getting a little symbol for the clavicle. And the gesture's about getting that rhythm, kinetic movement, working scale and proportion, and using horizontal and vertical alignment, and also axis and width and peripheral vision. That line in this chest is a center line, belly down to the uh, end of the pubic region, which will go a little bit lower. It's kind of the top of that. And then getting the alignment being in the back, See, I'm thinking about both sides with that oval coming through and volume. Rib cage coming through and then down to the oblique to the buttock. Leg as it connects to the back side of the model. The breasts are tilted slightly with the lower one being on the right in the image. Getting the egg form of the breast located on the chest as they split. Other breast coming over. Top of that breast form as it attaches to the, right there, that little shadow where it attaches to the pectoral at the speed of light. That's why you want to time yourself and get familiar, those of you that are at home in YouTube land, get familiar with time poses to exercise your brain to push it faster and to see it quicker. And in those of us in class, uh, at NK, you, obviously you realize you don't have a choice. We do that. We just go to the next pose really quickly. That's a great way to train, is to see that very quickly. Over time, and, and push the accuracy of that. Notice how I draw through all that now. As I contour over the arm, that comes forward now because of the darker line. That's why we're working with contour line weight as well. Block in, find the shadow form. A little con cross contouring and then block all that in with some value tone. I catch the background a little bit with also uh, her, her figure too. That just gives it a little bit of expressive quality too. Getting the top of the pubic region there. <clears throat> Targeting in the hand, getting one of the extensors on the forearm. Pushing that forward a little bit darker value. So there is this hierarchy of backwards to, 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 to forwards. Now breast, nipple, areoli forms there. And then coming around the abdomen and the left side there. Hip. 
keep your keep your constructions for your hands relatively simple a few flowy marks for fingers you're gonna have to experiment with trial and error there look at your mentors that's what I do I look at Pontormo and then Harry Carmen for, for quick gesture <laughs> sit her down on the platform there and feel that that the pubic region there and then we'll get the tube of the leg coming over recapture that but it just it helps with the palm method and sarf charcoal that you can really move on your drawing and get a lot of a lot of attention to the drawing very quickly by using broad strokes and thinner strokes now if you don't like that I get it because I didn't like it when I was a student for a while uh, and so I used a the writing of the pen holding method but if you can learn to start pushing yourself in practice studies with the the palm broad holding palm method because nobody has to see them nobody has to see your failures um, and so uh, when again for me I did about for this I did more more drawings than I showed on video and, it, and there's some that I just edited out and think we're good enough to put on film and so um, that you know you can take that idea too and just warm up and practice the palm holding method and don't worry about what it looks like yet until you get a better feeling for it. See, I flip the pencil down and, and really kind of hold it very far away from the, the tip so I can get even more of a broader stroke to fill in some value. And you can see how the model starts to eliminate. Working the contours of the model's form, egg form for the abductor and thigh region. egg form of the top thigh getting slender down to the bottom of the leg a quick line to, to suggest the ending of the knee region contouring cross contouring I'll put that in tone in a minute and then just a little bit of the calf and foreshortening it's very much an oval coming down a little bit of that cloth at the end there and then put her, her all in shadow It's interesting to see if I keep that little the egg form of that leg in the middle in, in light. It's kind of nice lit up a little bit. Adds a little bit of extra tension to the to the leg there. Redefining a little bit in the time that I have left. A couple of minutes. You know, we don't expect a refined figure in ten minutes, so you shouldn't respect uh, expect that. Definitely respect it, but don't expect to. We're looking for sketching, for warming up. Take a little bit of the eye, just to try to get some expression in that amount of time that we have. Flow of the curtain coming down. Let's work the bottom of that figure too. Pushing the side of that rib cage as it points away from us and downward. And her pelvic region points towards us and slightly upward to get that tilt going. Adding a little bit of core shadow on the shoulder to pop that out with some cross contouring just to darken that in. <clears throat> Turning that thigh in, showing that thigh turn. We'll go now for the calf. Got the tibia fibia direction very curved. Get the egg form of the calf and soleus area. Gastrocnemius and soleus area. We'll fill that in. Sometimes we'll just let that flow off the 
off the page and not have to worry about finishing it all. Try to end your drawings as poetically as you can within the amount of time that you can. And on to the next one. So here we have Oksana, sort of a, a nice reclining back pose. So we're going to use a more diagonal horizontal composition. So we'll locate the head, more of a rectangular, uh, rectangular flow. We'll kind of see her as a rectangular bell shape coming out almost like a triangle with the apex at the head. So we'll locate the beginning part of the, which is the apex, the focus on the buttock here, then down to the Le through the legs and down to the uh, the feet, of course, there. We get the axis for the shoulder, and then where her uh, elegant arm comes down to the hands there, resting on the, the cloth nicely. So locating, locating what you want in space there through gesture. And then sometimes we, I go, I work a little bit more rectilinear if I need, depending on the pose, and then we can really make it organic and really work that contour line across the form. Oop, another broken pencil there. Got another one. Got to break some pencils, right? Getting the bottom part of the hip to the buttock over, working across the form and to the top of the hip pointer or the pelvic region on the other side. And getting the flow down the leg, the top, and then working with the unit unitard there. <clears throat> you can see it slowly start to emerge the line of being and she's kind of torqued the buttock wants to go away from us but she's she's uh, bringing her torso slightly back towards us so we want to get that twist getting the split of the glutes over and then defining the bottom of the of the gluteus maximus there a little cross contouring cross that where there'll be a uh, shadow later Top of the apex of the trochanter. <clears throat> in the other glute form, you can see where it slightly curves underneath, and we'll get that split in a moment. But I've got to find out where some of these other areas are located on the, in the drawing and then get my eye clear to that. I'm feeling the gastrocnemius, the calf there, down, down, down to the heel which you'll get over to that. And then you, you, know, you don't have to be a slave to your gesture. You can make those changes later on too. <clears throat> and then the other foot, triangular wedge in through there. So defining now the split of the gastrocnemii here. Cross contouring. Working the form across and getting a little shadow tone across her. And then back across the other way to get that feeling there. Strong part of the back of the biceps femoris and semitendinous and membranous or the hamstring muscles and where the buttocks curve through top here coming down off the off the uh, upper leg to the lower leg to the tendons and then you get the opposite curve now where the knee is split there and you get down to the gastroc, the medial side, which is the lower side, which is going to be wider and lower to give that medial part of the calf and elegantly coming on down to the Achilles tendon then the heel or calcaneus area, feeling the, the, the ankle through to the back of the calcaneus region of the heel and over. Simple wedge, bottom wedge for that foot. Put that in shadow. It's a little shadow, which we'll be in. Coming through sacral area. It's a triangular area. You can see it by the folds. It goes. It it disappears within the split of the buttock there. That triangular area, and we're going to come up, grab, working all the way to the shoulder. And working around to the bottom and feeling the unitard come into the sac. Basically, it, it mimics the sacrum as it disappears in curving around the other glute, which is kind of nice. It emphasizes the, the flow of the buttock, kind of like um, a bikini bottom or, or a very tight G string type bottom would be, for, I suppose, for males or females through there. And 
and we get some shadow, cast shadow from her arm onto the buttock there. And she starts to emerge and then put her down in some shadow to set her down. And where she's touching the ground with the buttock, it's going to get a darker line through. And then that leg goes back and back towards the model and disappears from us. And then we catch a little bit now. <coughs> Excuse me, of the he of the calf coming through. Can you see it barely there? Uh, and these poses will be at the end of the video, so you can have them larger to work with. Uh, with me in the video and then on your own again. So you'll have some of your poses to work with. Cross contouring. Can't quite see the, the robe that back there, but I wanted to make sure we get the model pose large as I could on the paper. <clears throat> a little bit of gesture to give us a little bit of value coming through. So we got some time left to work the upper part of the body. <clears throat> reconstitute that coarse shadow, a little darker in through their cast shadow. That's really the focal point right in through the buttock region where it comes up and splits very nicely there. Get to finish out the foot. We'll try and get a wedge as it starts to hide underneath. You don't have time to get every toe. Don't worry about all that. You just want to get the feeling that it's there. You could get to that later. You'll learn over time to start finding your own ways to shorthand. Again, looking at your, your mentors and what you, what you can get out of them. You've got to be looking at mentors that you really like their work or their uh, particular approach to idea problem solving and drawing or style if you want. And then borrowing from some of that too as well. Getting a little darker into that foot for both the heels to bring them forward a little bit. Now we'll jump over here work on the shoulder region. And coming through, feeling the cast shadow coming across her, her spinal area, the upper back down the lower buttock. And we'll start to tighten this up. So it's a complex area and you've got to simplify it to see simple shape and then turn that shape into form. Breast form is kind of a slight dome, kind of like an ice cream cone. We get a little like a sun rising over. We get a little bit of shadow on the, on the right side of it since the light source is on the left. coming down the shoulder to the unitard. And you know the head's pretty hidden back there. You get the top arch of the head coming downward. And we're gonna get more of an axis now for our shoulder, get that located better. Get that hand located, redirect the hand. So sometimes when I get the gesture, I'll start I'll start at the opposite end. In this case I'll put her hand down and then I'll 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 bring them together at the ending and so they all connect. Feeling the flow of the gesture of a finger, one or two, and get a flow of the gesture in, in, in value there so it's just a broad kind of stroke. Sometimes more than it is a you know, full hand it seems to work out pretty well to get the feeling of the of the hand in such a quick amount of time. Remember you want to get a full figure in the time that you have for your uh, session with that pose. So if you're working three hours or if you're working three, three minutes or five, ten, ten, you know, ten minutes in our case, you want to get that. Coming down the forearm, down to the wrist, sitting her back down a little further, a little cross contouring with some of the the wrinkling of the form of the unitard. And now we've got to put that the top of the arm on where the deltoid of the shoulder is so that we have really conclusive depths of space where things are. So I've got to raise that hand up, excuse me, the arm up, for the shoulder, bring it up higher so I can put her head behind that. Notice I had to elongate her, but it worked out. <clears throat> and the head, you don't need a lot, just you have to simplify your symbols else there. So you need a curvature for the spine. I'm putting the pillow on a little bit. Everything gets buried in a little bit of shadow there. <clears throat> and then we're going to put that in a slight shadow. We'll find the top of the head, the forehead, simple line, and then curve that over to find the forehead, find her hairline, which is going to be so important, and the eye socket. You can see the brown, a little bit of the eyeball coming through, but we don't need a lot of that. We just need the shadow of that. 
little line for the nose, and that gets the impression that she's slightly beginning to look back towards us, perhaps. Maybe this figure was reclining, and then somebody came in the room and startled, or what, whatever the story was. We could see that emerging. And then clearing up this cast shadow a little further. A little bit more of the background, and we're on to our next one here. Another one of Stephen. Here we go. You know, looking at this particular pose, he's very triangulated. The top of the head is, is one part of the triangle. The bottom of the uh, foot on the left and the buttock on the right as it comes back a diagonal made by the two feet and the buttock seem to make a kind of a tri triangle composition. <clears throat> Getting the oval feeling of the head, finding a brow, eye line, side plane of the head, symbol of the nose, ball of the nose to the nostril mostly in shadow to the maxilla part of the mouth, chin, and then shadow plane and all that could be pushed back in shadow then we'll start bringing down the neck. Sometimes I'll spend a little bit more time in the head in the beginning just to get it anchored, not in every pose. <clears throat> You can feel the top of his shoulder girdle as a box, top of the box. We'll start to tighten that up later. Rib cage down to the abdomen, down to the lower buttock region, so we're getting our lima bean going at the speed of light here. Axis line for the leg. <clears throat> Excuse me. Down and through to the lower leg, to the foot there, try and get a wedge for the foot, and we'll come up a little bit now. Try to locate the, the shoulder regions of an egg form there. Clear up the back. And locating where that hand's located, not quite as far as the toe, the tip of the foot, but closer, but not quite as far. So we want to be careful there, then getting the, the bottom leg as it to the leg tilts down. Simplify that foot into wedge, kind of a rectangular triangular wedge, moving slightly towards us. And then the platform. And very lightly and get all this kind of located and then it can really start to go to town with the model and start to be incisive and start to clean up this drawing. Getting our gesture on top of it with our contour gesture. <clears throat> so now locating properly the neck and the lima bean coming over the rib cage to the front where the, pec the uh, pectorals are, the chest, feeling the back of the bottom of the pelvic region and the buttock now coming over to the center of the back, broke a pencil Edit that out. Here we go. Center of the back coming down, finding the lower uh, part of the lat and erector spinae, and then really that crease now of his underwear and then his oblique there. I can find the knee, put that knee on. There we go. Where the tendon turns back in to the figure. Can really dig in there to that leg, get that nice lower leg going, buttock around. We want to work, work across and around the forms. We don't want to keep them flat. <clears throat> that deltoid over there underneath. And we're getting the bicep tricep region. So it starts to move to the elbow. 
keep the spirit of that gesture alive and giving strength to our contour line with variation because light source and all these are generally coming to the left what's great about that if you're using imagery you can keep your light source stationary and then you can have an image that you flip to give the other side of that which is kind of really nice Defining the lower armpit there to nipple, letting it poke through. What, what I've noticed, you're, you're kind of, you know, with these quick kind of gesture in this sort of academic sort of LA styles, or there's some of us who are a little bit more sloppier. That's definitely my style, and then others that are real, real super clean, which is Steve Houston is really. Uh, very super clean. I really respect that. Um, and other, other artists, Glenn Vilpu is somewhere in between. Har Carmian is very flamboyant. It's probably the the um, the best of the best at that particular approach. He was he was taught by Lorser Lorser Fettelson at uh, Art Center College of Design as well, who had uh, a style that wasn't quite as flamboyant as as Harry developed, but. Uh, so this has been about a hundred years of passing on this kind of academic gesture technique that really is also developed and taught at the uh, animation studios across Los Angeles for sure, which is where I have some experience uh, through the very short brief uh, through there. But you can see once you start to put, you find your forms and you find where your shadow shape is and you lay it down broadly, see how quick that can go? And it starts to, you're like, wait a minute, it really starts to emerge. And so I like a little bit looser style and try to be as flamboyant in, as I can to style the pose. And then I've seen other artists are really super clean, but they simplify, they, they also take a slower amount of time um, and they simplify their forms into a little bit flatter and then they throw light, separate the light and put the core shadow on and it and it, it works out just to gorgeous effects. You know, so I think Steve Hughes in my opinion, Steve Houston is kind of the best at that in the of the LA artists that I had met and also trained with. He was one of my mentors at Art Center too. I took two had had to take two two uh, classes. One figure drawing and also uh, head drawing. And then uh, he also mentored me in the, the um the after after class uh, classes figure figure workshops held Monday through Friday. So just getting the wedge of that foot with a little indication of the toe, and then blocking that, uh, putting that wedge into shadow. A little bit of the flow of the background there of the drapery, and on to the next one. You know, you get one shot at it, and you know you get what you get, and learn from each pose. And you could come back and do the same poses the next day. You could flip these around opposite, whatever you wanted to do, and see how you do the next day. So <clears throat> the trick is to never stop. Keep keep practicing. It's a craft. It's a lifelong commitment. Even if you're doing other other things, which I do professionally, that don't have anything to do with the figure. This coming back to this craft has been a joy and a real pleasure. Doing the drawing database has been a joy and a pleasure for for that reason, too, as well. To keep continue to continue to practice the craft on camera and talk about it, and it's part of my profession, which is to teach it. All right, so we located the oval of the head, and then we got she's tilted high left, low right. We know that by the back of the ears. And the neck comes slightly in front of the jaw to the right, and then we located the axis of the shoulders high on uh, low on the left, higher on the right. And then we start the lima bean pose. It's a very nice kind of odalesque feeling to this particular pose from the back, ongra, ongra kind of pose. So we get the lima bean located, and we see that shoulder coming through. We get the center of the back a, a little bit. So the center of the head starts. In the center, then moves down the, the right side of the, now the side of the neck, and then all the way to the right side of the back. And then we get the gesture of her hand and the, the uh, design line or axis line of the leg to the hip. Get her located on the stool. 
which is a two point stool, so it's located slightly um, vanishing point to a left and to the right, more open on the left. Get her triangular foot wedge. There, the top foot, and then coming down to the lower foot, locating the other foot there. They're almost in the sound, kind of the same as almost uh, gesture position. Just you get two different foot studies, I think. That's fascinating to see that. And there's the center of the back. The neck overlapping right there. And then we start to get the clavicle, deltoid, scapular region, humerus as it all comes together in that beautiful area around the shoulder. I'll start to put some tone down on the head. I get that pretty quick just for me so I can locate the anchor of the pose, which is generally the head, not always, but most of it. Getting the outer edge of the uh, back side of the shoulder down to the scapulae on the outside. Center of the back, trying to locate C7. It's probably a little bit low, but it's okay. Center of the back, downward, elegantly. Then come back across the form. Don't keep going down the buttock. Back across to feel the volume. You can feel the belly just slightly showing there. And then feeling the form across to the scapula there. You can see where it gets a little bit dark. It's kind of a triangular, will be a triangular shape. You can see just the shadow before the center of the back and then in between. Then I can really locate the armpits where the teres major and minor are in the lat. Feeling it around the deltoid. And we'll go back and locate that elbow, get that elbow nice and clean. And I can, I know where I'm going. Tricep downward, slinks down. Bicep slinks down, I know where I'm going. Uh, attaching muscle, brachioradialis there. You don't need to know that uh, for now. Forearm, egg form down to the wrist, to the fingers coming out. I love the flow of those fingers. Try to get that broad flick of the, kind of like a brush. And then we get to the palm, to that little bump there on the uh, wrist, the ulnar P, that's the ulna. Get a little cross contouring. Cast shadow on the egg form of the rib cage and over on the back to give it some light purpose. And then all that can be buried in a tone. It doesn't have to be that, it can kind of be sloppy if you want. And, you know, I'm being more controlled than I've seen my mentor, Harry Carman. At times, it can be really loose, so painterly. And then getting the silhouette of the back of the arm there, down through the lower back, really strong, kind of quick straight line, and then curve her buttock over. See, that whole thing is an oval system, around, all the way around to where the leg in the belly meat there, that's kind of straight little area there, the sartorius region, and then we'll get that knee coming up slightly, locate that, so she's covering some of that and downward to the ankle, tendon there, which will help define the calf and the thigh, the lower thigh, where she's sitting on the stool, a nice dark line there. You don't see the split of the buttock. We're just going to get some cross contour there and throw that all in shadow. Do there. We'll get a little bit of her hand coming down. Get the stool line and also the drapery on that. Let's pull that all together. Pull it all together there. <clears throat> don't have time for a lot of detail. We want to get the whole thing in, mapped out as elegantly as you can. Down to the cat, uh, excuse me, ankle. Get my anatomy right there. Try and get her wedge. Pulling off that foot to the stool. Another broken pencil looks like. And yeah, we get that pencil fix there. Get a new one going and we'll start to now locate the bottom of the foot there again with a new fresh pencil. I tend to break quite a bit in gesture. 
Get just the feeling of the, of the toes there. <clears throat> no time for you know, each individual digit to live. They have to be grouped together. And you're going to have to watch others, myself, and, and look at other mentors to find your own way to get a feeling of that foot to come through. Now we'll get the, the silhouette of the foot coming down to the bottom of the foot there. Sometimes we'll just leave it as a triangle. That's, that works enough. Ball the foot. Let that big toe maybe come off a little bit. And we're going to get the room squared away. We'll cast shadow back there. It gives a nice little kind of squiggle rhythm going. So we got some time now to further delineate the features of the head, the flow of the of the uh, hair up in uh, a bun there a little bit, if you will, and a little change in value, blonde to dark, which gives us a nice uh, contrasting effect. Now we can put on I'll put on a little bit of background tone to really pop the focal point. Uh, bring that to the side plane of the head as quick as it can. We're going to spend some time here uh, manipula manipulating a little bit of value. The trick is with gesture to keep, keep that flow alive as best you can and not get too stiff with it. I'm glad to grab the block into the light here. Very kind of painterly approach. Brushy, if you will, flowy. See how that stool is offset now to the right there. So it's tilted facing left and it goes back in space to the right a little. So I can clean up these edges. I've got a little time left, a couple more minutes. And I can start to clean some of these edges just to let it read a little bit better. Feel that scapula now cross a little bit further. Under the arm a little bit where that cast shadow is to feel that on her. Feel the slight scapular, scapular divot there and, and on to the next. Love this pose here. She's really leaning. It's a, kind of a Rubens pose. She's really leaning uh, uh, tilted to the right, she was a real trooper for doing this, and she, we did multiple shots of this, really lovely. Um, and so first thing, I'm finding the axis line here of her shoulder, then her top of her hip buttock, and then I'll locate the head here. Now I've switched to a Carbothello pencil, which is a chalkier, chalk pastel pencil, not quite as rich and dark, but a lovely kind of uh, sanguine uh, tone to it, finding the oval of the head, very downturned part of the head. Getting the brow line there, top of the head, where the pigtail comes out, and a few flourishing lines to try to get that gesture to work for me. And getting the nose symbol in there, tilted to the side, a little bit of the tip of the nose with the nostril coming through brow. <clears throat> side plane of the head feeling in through their ear we're going to find that shoulder a rectangled symbol with the axis in and then up high there she's resting part of her balancing part of her body that nice twerking and twisting and balancing with the arm on the uh, wall there and then we'll feel the lima bean coming down down to the buttock, which is slightly tilted upward to the left, downward to the back to stabilize this beautiful pose as she's twisting and torque, torque the body to the right. Um, and then the pelvis wants to go to the slight upper right and then really twisting with the rib cage 
and then it comes back to our left a little bit. She's opening it back up. It's like she's ready to almost look look at us a little bit here. So the hand, the tip of the hand and feet are almost even there. So we come back through. And the bottom of the foots here. Gonna try and get a wedge. Just getting the silhouette of it, but nice and light and broad. The broader I can keep my stroke, it keeps it keeps it a little bit more wispy and less definitive. And when you start using the tip of the line, you get into a very concrete statement about where you want that form to be. And over the shoulder there. To the tip of the shoulder, deltoid region, trapezius coming up to the neck to connect up there. And coming across the form. Nice rib cage bulging there as it extends over, really extending and stretching the erector spine. And the lat there, and then we get a little that broad cavity of the spine. And then right in through there where it cuts through that real contraction area where the skin contracts. What's actually happening, the rib cage, rib cage is being jammed into the oblique. And we get creasing of the skin and folds. Even very thin women and men will have creasing folds because their skin's elastic. If not, we would just be crushed by it. So getting this shoulder region deltoid to come over and then down, finding the broad part of the elbow or arm to the elbow if you will, tricep to the elbow, condyles over, bicep, egg form, brachial radialis is that muscle pulls from the humerus over to the ulna radius and then we get the Extensors and flexors, better commonly known as the forearm, down to that blockier wrist and through there. So you see in some drawings I'm a little cleaner, some I'm a little bit rougher and looser, it just happens. This one's a little bit more cleaner version, some are cleaner. get that brow to really overturn there so we can see that and get a little bit of shadow going underneath her her head so we can start to see her separate from the background scapular region just to try and get her kind of symbol get the top of her back moving moving from bottom right uh, left to top right which gives us the rhythm to the shoulder, which will give us up to the arm. It's a nice balancing act. <clears throat> it's a lovely pose that she did. One of my favorites of the session that we had with our three, our three current um, photograph models. What great kids they are. And uh, upper, lower forearm, upper arm to the, or excuse me, arm to the deltoid, little shadow there. Mix it in with the background just a little bit. And then we have the forearm now and get to the egg form over to the wrist very slight thin wrist <clears throat> and then the gesture of the hand we want to keep those broad strokes painterly strokes to the ulna there ulnar p the when i call the older p if you look in your your wrist on the opposing side of the thumb that's where the ulna is the radius is on your thumb side that's what turns it about 180 degrees or so and then the ulna is on the opposite side, that's how you can remember that. Get some of those folds. You'll need opposite line, curve lines to make folds work. One curve touches the back of another curve to get that folding, that gathering of flesh, kind of the fat and just fleshier elasticity that we all have. Sacral area, mark the bottom of the sacrum there, that which helps define the right glute coming around and over and full there, nice and full, uh, view, and then we'll get the curving, those cross contour lines give us more rhythm coming across, and we'll get that fullness there, around and over. And then some gathering there in the dark, and it can hit some stronger value, 
some tighter, uh, real st uh, st strong dark marks to get that form to really start to turn back into her. And then, of course, we can shade down that area right in through there and up and over. And she really disappears, the leg, the knee disappears inside her. For the most part, her deltoid. And we get the wedging of the foot there. <clears throat> An elegant pose where her, see her big toe slightly coming up, but see the grabbing potential of the toes. I keep them nice and long through the shadow. We don't, we, you can't see it through the shadow, but they're really long and they're grabbing the floor. The big toe will, will uh, point upward and the, the, uh, rest of the toes, the smaller toes, if you will, will be grabbing like almost like a frog. They're very elastic and they can, those those people who are a little bit, what we call double jointed, you can see those joints sort of crease and turn on one another. See that gathering? This form goes one way and the calf goes the other way. That really gets the foreshortening going. Cast shadow on the buttock there, the split around the knee. Excuse me, yeah, around the knee to the uh, calf. It's really, like, really got a lot going on this pose. Really a lot, lot to like here. Ball of the foot, and we'll define a little bit of the big toe. And the fat pads. You want to get that, see that footprint right there and uh, right on the back. Yeah, anytime you have the, the bottom of the foot there, you want to, you want to get the, the feeling of that footprint in the sand. You want to get the feeling of the of the pad. So, so next time you're at the beach, put your foot in the sand or if you're wet your feet and put it on concrete you, and you see that footprint, that's what you're looking for for when you have a bottom of the foot pose. There's more to it obviously than that, but that's generally what you want with um, to start with at least with the bottom of the foot uh, pose. That's generally a good idea to, to, to use that as a, as a concept analysis. A beautiful pose by Stephen, really elongated high on the uh, right and then coming down to the left. Uh, it's important to locate the that's that uh, what's dominant about this is you see that the head is covered, but that axis line from shoulder to shoulder tilted very high to the left and then moving down to the lower right there. That'd be important. You kind of see I start to mark it there. And then that beautiful elongated flow of the arm to the the directional point of the hand is kind of like pointing where the gesture where we want to look and where he's pointing to look at through here. So I'll locate now, trying to find that head under the chin. I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, uh, analyze that when I draw this drawing. I'm gonna make that arm and that head a little. I'm gonna take out his chin. And just, I'm just going to leave it because it still works pretty well, but it's not completely accurate. And I encourage you when you make when you make analyses and make those changes, unless there's some reason that it doesn't work, then I encourage you to go ahead and keep them. There's nothing wrong with making some uh, artistic on-the-fly uh, changes. The model will get up and move, and the uh, your audience will see a drawing for what it is and what it's worth. And, and, and unless there's some reason to be... Uh, um, super stressed about complete accuracy, and there are times there. There, quite crank, quite frankly, there is. This won't be one of them. And about gesture and about loosening up and getting a feel for it. <clears throat> you might do a difficult pose and gesture, and then do the same poses over and over again on a page of studies to get a real understanding of that, of what it is that you want from that pose to really under, understand it. So when you get to a painting. You, the drawings you can take and, and transfer them to a painting. So getting the, uh, locating the condyles of the lower condyle of the elbow out to the forearm. I love this arm pose with that head. So you can see already you know I won't have enough room for the chin. And so instead of, of reworking that, just leave it because it's going to work out uh, fine. Getting the gesture of the hands, the, really the, what anchors this is the tilt of the knuckles there, the condyles of the the arm bones and that pointing direction of the fingers. Hairline coming through and I try to locate the shadow shape of the, the, the model, locate that in, locate that, get that ear a little bit more under control in size and then get a little bit of the brow. We don't see that so I have to invent that a little bit further so he's looking 
in that same direction that he's pointing. Lower tricep there to the top of the deltoid coming over, getting the lat, finding that side. So you see I find the width on one side to the other and locate the sternum. I thought about I thought about adding that. So I thought, okay, should I add the chin? Here's where I'm thinking. I thought, no, I want to keep going with it. You can see where I was thinking about that. I thought, why not just leave it? These are your drawings to interpret and use and get cleaner and practice your craft. It's like athletics or music or theater <clears throat> or whatever else you need to learn. So one oblique to the other, finding that width and that barrel turn of the lower abdominal rectus abdominis region to the leg. And I'm not going to get the entire body in. And that's good. You can focus, get a little bit larger with, with in this case, more of the abdomen and upper body and not have to get all of the body. You still want to compose, composing and getting a feel for goodness where things are as you practice your craft is still important. So the aesthetic of that. All that's buried in quick shadow here. Elbow darker here. Under flexors there as they torque and turn, they get beautifully coming across there. I think it's a really gorgeous pose that Stephen takes here. Quite nice. And putting that whole gesture into a little shadow to get him to point. Really all about the feeling and getting those quick shapes, turning them into 3D forms with a little bit of value added in that 10 minute space that we have. So combining quick gesture, all of our gesture techniques and ideas with a little bit of a little bit of value separation. You get something going pretty pretty quickly. And then you could spend a lot of time later on redrawing from that, interpreting and or uh, adding to that, slowing this drawing down on your own and then getting more uh, or tighter with it, if you will. Cleaning it up, getting the outer lats there with the it's really nice lat pose there, a little bit of the uh, serratus interior in the front of that, that bulky part past the pectoral and you get to the nipple there. Locate one side to the other, quick ovals. Cross the form, and I'll get the shadow in there in a moment. So I'm going to put all that in shadow. Down across that underwear line or shorts line really helps us with the bowl of the, of the pelvic area to turn that quite nicely. Lower rib cage, getting that form to show through for us. Start to put on this arm in shadow. And then over creasing where the pectoral comes up past the rib cage, over across the deltoid. And then that's important to get one thing, one form in, in front of another. And then we get hand there, gesture of the, the uh, top side of the hand, <clears throat> locate the pubic region and we can just start to really just mop all this in so we get the rough gesture of the upper and lower legs and through. bit of the curtain there to keep that all more designed and together. And then we can start to begin to find where we can find the shadow shape here. Split the pectoral to the neck under the armpit and that's where we're going to start to find that separation of the shadow to light with a quick cross contour shadow and shading underneath here cast shadow. We've got him moving in light there. 
Then let's bring that elbow and forearm since it's the focal point a little bit closer to us. Let's undercut that. And I could spend some hours now refining this drawing and making some corrections and changes, but the point of it is the, the 10, 10, 8 to 10 minute study. Clean that up a little bit and bring this arm forward in front of the head a little bit. Get those outer contour boundaries and a little bit more of that inner, inner arm extensors there, flexors, and over. And there we go. All right, so next pose here, standing. Uh, Steven, uh, our model here, a little bit standing. So these can be a little bit difficult because they're a little bit more subtle. Uh, sometimes gesture, we over pose for action, which is great, especially for animators. But uh, a lot of times fine artists want something a little bit more relaxed and dare we say a little bit more everyday or, or I guess natural. And so here we have something like that, maybe kind of a, an in-between pose where he's slightly standing and maybe moving to his next pose. And so I changed my style a little bit uh, where I'm shorthanding some of the tone. You're going to see me draw a little tone mass gesture first and then put some, then put some line in there, which is something I like to do on, on kind of more my style a little bit instead of emulating some of my masters a little bit or uh, mentors that I, I use. So you can see, go, you can go for a tone right away. So you can see I can mark the shoulder, go for some tone on that. And that's a nice way to, to think about drawing too as well. It's a combination of mass gesture and also linear linear gesture. And you can see I leave the armature a little bit behind too, getting a little bit of the pectoral up and through. And then I get the center line coming down to some design line there and then moving over. And then I see I already grouped the tone, the cast shadow. That's a nice shape gesture right in through there and then get the form shadow a little bit. It's very, it's fairly nebulous so that <clears throat> I can, I can go back and redefine it later, but I like to do that too as well. Get the uh, uh, slight oval there for the uh, shorts line and then get the outer fold of his abdomen over and through and then that little roll there. Bottom of the pectoral coming through working quickly. I think this will be less than 10 minutes. Getting a little bit of the trapezius as it slopes down to the right and over to the clavicle and the, the front part of the scapula, the humerus there. Pectoral over and down, cutting in through. Feeling that cylindrical kind of quality and then getting a lot of tone to come through here. So it's even more of a shorter hand than before. And we'll clean up that edge, working some of the edges. And the forearm coming down to the hand area with the thumb showing a little bit of the index finger coming over the body, touching the shorts gently. <clears throat> Feeling a little bit of that gesture. With hands, I like to emphasize the big toe and the thumb a little bit more concretely. If I see them and then let the gesture be more broad with the rest of the fingers. That's just something I've noticed I do a little bit. Pit of the neck there, that little hollow in between and over on the other side to, to give it more realism. <clears throat> and moving down the form a little bit. So this requires keeping your design gestures a little, the design lines more in your head. You can do that if you feel confident. You can see I go for a lot of tone there some quick tone and then tighten it up so it's quick but I'm being mindful of the shape of the tone I'm putting down so it's not just everywhere being a little bit more careful and we'll also go for some background to emphasize focal point already within the head and the shoulder region and over just to start to get everything located nicely through the top of the head Bring him down a little bit. <clears throat> These are pretty lightning fast. I don't, there's no, no time really to think. Uh, turn on your favorite music. I think I had music going on when I was doing these as I'm narrating, overdubbing it. So now I'm doing a armature gesture that's more mass. 
It's a little thicker because he's in shadow, or if he, even he wasn't, I could do that. But we'll do a little armature and we'll thicken that up a little bit. Get that diagonal going where the feet are, that back foot firmly in the back. Find the pelvic undergirdle there, the, the uh, pubic region and the shorts coming over. <clears throat> so you're kind of com you're combining gesture and tone um, together a little bit quicker or quite a bit quicker obviously than a longer a very long sketch. These are meant to be quick gestures and no, no more than that so we can we can give a, a more dominant or darker tonality to them. Remember that. Uh, you know, if you're using gesture to start a drawing, which you which you probably will be if you're working more traditionally or academically, you're going to want to keep that lighter so you can draw on top of that. Uh, but if you're not, if your gesture is the means to an end, then you can really rip it and keep it as dark as you want and really get into a finished uh, line there. So the the heel is an overturn, and you saw the the, the under arch of the foot. I underturn that. And then the ball of the foot comes back to the toe, and I overturn it again to get the foot and the wedge feeling on the side, three-quarter side of the, of the foot. knee there, <coughs> excuse me, to the <coughs> flow, the music, excuse me there, <coughs> to the flow of the, of the rhythm, I think I said music, throw the rhythm over there to the femur, working the tone down, getting the feeling of that egg form of the, of the calf, and then toning in all that from the, excuse me, the tibia fibia over to the right side of the foot there, got to get myself together here, proper description. And you can get that mass gestured and laid in pretty quickly. And you get the ankle high on the inside, lower on the outside. Anatomically, sometimes you don't see that because of the position, but that's the anatomical truth of that. And the wedging of the foot and the toe, toe lines, the back of the digits of the toe over, overlap, will feel like he has a, we'll give him a, just a gesture sock on there. <clears throat> and then get more background fulfilled. Tightening up the cast shadow there to give it more clarity, giving some accents to some of the darker lines, cleaning up the clavicle, sternum area, pit of the neck, get a little bit of the darker of the hair coming through. Not worried about the detail of the, of the face so much point in time, a little too early for that. And we're going pretty quick, get the cheekbones out a little bit further. Clean up the neck, get the Adam's apple there. And then the other side of the arm, put that in tone a little bit. We'll move on to a few more here. So we have Oksana here. Nice kind of ballet-ish kind of pose. So I, I uh, see the gesture of the head is more of a triangle here. <clears throat> and then we get the hairline. I try to get that established fairly quickly. When doing a little bit more sustained gesture. Sometimes I don't just because of the time. But we'll get the root of the hair, the arm and elbow coming up above to the right of her head a little bit. She's slightly leaning towards us with her back arched. And get that tone in. So when you're gesturing the head, I look for the eye socket marking and then the brow, forehead to the brow to a symbol of the nose, a triangle, and then the arch of the maxilla, the mouth, the ball-like quality coming down. And the lips will pull across there. You don't have a lot of space to do a whole lot. And so I'll get her in shadow there, a little bit of a oval form for her cheek. Got nice full cheeky jowls there going. Gesture there. 
<clears throat> feel the rhythm coming down the body to the buttock that's a little high, so I'll, I'll adjust that in a moment to the shoulder line. And then I'll leave the drawing, but I should have dropped that right shoulder. Just you'll see that a little bit. I need to well drop it. Just make sure you drop yours a little bit lower. If you're really following close. The point of these is to see it, follow it, and then do these on your own. Draw along with me and then do your own too. Always do your own. That's the main point of this is to take the lesson and uh, find an analysis, copy it, and then, then be able to apply it, re redo it with the same poses, and then go find your own poses and practice these techniques for as long as you, you need. It may take years and years. <clears throat> Just getting the podium laid in a little bit, a slight two-point there. Not quite horizontal to the, to the picture plane. So trying to find the shoulder there. She's tilted around and back a little bit towards us. She has an arched back. Feeling the rib cage around. Using a quick contour to find that. And then we get the glute coming over, which is emphasized by the unitard to the sacrum area. And then the axis of the shoulder. That's a little high. You can tell there's space between her chin, her neck a little bit. I don't think I ever changed that, which is okay. It's not a problem so much as it, you see it, slight inaccuracies. Again, we talked about don't sweating some of those. Those can be nice changes. Once the model leaves, we don't care as much unless it's really out of character. Especially for these very, very quick gestures. Trying to get as much accuracy in poetry as we can. Remember, they're not volumetric drawings, even though we're getting nice volume through there. We're trying to get to a quick finish sketch in 10 minutes here. So we can emphasize the glute as it turns over like butterfly wings on each side. There are two forms of the glute, the left and right, and then the right one is more full since we see more of the, her side where the shadow ends, that gets in into the right side of the hip. So it's fuller glute. Foreshortened leg. Cap that over. See how I cap that? Turn to the, to the knee. And then we get the opposite with the calf as it moves into that knee area, the underturn of that gastrocnemius. So and we'll get some tone coming down through. Put her in shadow. Then more flex on this side of the glute form as it's upturned a little bit and then gets squeezed on the lower right to the hip. And then we'll follow along with the unitard uh, ending there to, to distinguish the sacrum in between the split of the buttock. And then down with the leg here, coming downward with both. <clears throat> and then you can feel that in tone, hit a little bit of that Achilles tendon which is so very prominent in the back of the leg of the heel region as well. Coming down to find that calcaneus area of the under part of the heel and get that under turn there and then that foot's really foreshortened. As she's stressing downward on it, plants it on the ground there and then the uh, pads of the foot on the side there to get that. That's a, that's a wicked little area to draw. It's not an easy foot to draw there. It's a lot of fun though. <clears throat> feeling the difference between the knees where they're located one much lower the leg extended towards us with the foot there and then we get a little of that background in shadow Emphasize that split a little bit deeper to push that contour line, round out the buttock, and then the calf over. The egg form, longer and extended gastrocnemius and soleus underneath. A little bit of shadow on that form, and let that fade off. There we go. <clears throat> Just 
reconstitute the hair there. Being aware that, again, we're shorthanding all this, a little darker in the eye socket and the hair, just to pull out a little bit of the likeness as quick as we can. We can't get too much involved there. So we don't have enough time. We'll come down the back. We'll catch the back of the unitard, very classic sort of cylinder uh, turning. Catch your deltoid now, the shoulder to the trapezius of the upper neck on the back. Arm coming down, extended. Filling that deltoid and over to the bicep. To the forearm, which overlaps. And we get a little bit of the divot where the, sh where the uh, elbow is. See how the overlaps comes over? <clears throat> There she emerges with the elbow to the gesturing, the triangular feeling of the arm in this position to the gesture of the of the uh, <clears throat> hands. So just about there. Tease out a little bit of the separation nose, upturn nose. And using a little shadow on the side there to trap the light on her abdomen. And then on this side, we'll give shadow there so to give more light on her. The time frame we have left. Not a whole lot of time left in this pose. Just a few, 15 seconds or so. Again, these studies can be used if you're if you're strong enough at drawing the figure, you can take these gestures and then rework them with another drawing and, and make them extended poses working out of your imagination. We'll do that. We'll do we'll do gestures from imagination. I have volumetric figures from imagination. All right, so our next pose. So Oxana is a uh, former volleyball player here, a local local high school in the Cincinnati area, I believe, and. So we, we talked about, hey, let's do some volleyball poses. Let's do some, we did some spiking and some serving. And I think we, we did now some digging out of the, uh, the volleyball. And uh, she was right there with it, got on the ground and did a great job of, of digging out some good old uh, poses there. So excellent, excellent pose. It really stretched out. You can really see the arch of the back later on. So I spent a little time more with the head using a lot of quick tone. This is probably the, you know, the, the part we spend the longest on is getting the feeling of, of that head. So the head symbol and then symbols for the eye, the nose, the upturned nose and mouth very quickly using the side plane. Look how I mass gesture now in the armature of the hands, group them together and also a little bit of the arms and just tease out a little bit of the uh, edges of those. You can get a lot of realism pretty quickly in a gesture. So she's quite a bit in shadow. So you can start, once I get a little bit of the shape of the rib cage here, and I can start to just put a tone down and feel where that's coming through. And there she is now with the upper rib cage and then down to the lower back, under the breast, rib, rest of the rib cage, under turn right there where it turns back in and over where the tummy is, the belly. And then we start to get into the end of the leotard there, or unitard. And we get a little shadow there. So it's a pretty quick mass gesture. And then we get into the hip and the buttock coming around. There she is, extending. And then I feel a little bit of the design line of the leg. And that leg is almost even to the hand there, just slightly above it. So you got to bring that horizontal uh, marking over either in your mind or on paper or both. And you can see with the get the mass gesture and then I have a feeling of where I want the width of that. Turning that unitard over, feeling it to the buttock, curving that. Getting my paper straight. There we go, curving it through to the pretty, pretty much an easy leg to draw profile. Turning the hip pointer, trochanter, a little bit of a divot there in the 
where the shadow is. And then we come down to the leg, to the quads, and then the hamstring on the side here, and then down to the knee. You want to sit that knee on the ground at an angle. She's pointing it slightly to the, to the left of us, but close towards us. And then a really nice foreshortened leg, calf. We want to overlap that calf. I'll find the end of the foot, and then I will get to that calf and turn, turn, turn. See how it turns right there? Big, strong turn where the bulk of that calf is. Another one for the soleus up to the Achilles, over to the ankle, calcaneus area, the back of the foot. And then we got to bring that back up to the ankle, right in through there. Mark that, turn that through. The ending of the foot where the toes are. Coming through, whoops, coming through there. Into the side of the foot and get that gesture for the foot, the feeling of that. And there she is, emerging already through there pretty quickly. This will be less than 10 minutes, I think. Then we can get more fully now over to the foot. We'll start to find tip of the breast and then lat there a little bit where the unitards seam the seam together, sewn together there. Emphasizes a little bit of the lats. A little bit of the eye emerge there looking shadow. There she is. And the deltoid now we can demarcate stronger since it's in front of the head. We need a separation there. Coming down that leg. So we feel the leg as a, as a mass gesture, and then we feel the ankle to that very much triangular wedge of the foot, and she's got that flexed a little bit, gripping with the toes. So we have the arch on the medial side, you can see how it gradually turns in. We get that toe digits there and that big toe grabbing the bottom and underneath there. And we'll get that little thinned out. We'll get a slight calf, bottom part of the calf emerging, and then we'll start working with that background. Get your backgrounds in there. Give a little place for environment cheekbone beautiful high cheekbones that she has bring those out a little bit there she goes not a lot of time you don't want to be fussy with your drawing you want to get to it and symbolize it and simplify it in a gesture you have plenty of time to do longer drawings later these will inform your longer drawings and make them as strong as ever and you learn to abbreviate your drawings. <clears throat> A little bit left in this drawing. Just tweaking now and emphasizing some of the overlapping points. Points of interest in the head, a little bit darker there. A little bit of mass contouring. And I think we're just about on our way to our last one. I love these, love these athletic poses. They're great. All right, our last one, kind of uh, uh, leaning, arching over the pedestal. We got a good laugh on this one. I forget what we were laughing at, but we got to get her leaning over. So we've got to feel the axis lines of some of the places where the hip and the shoulder are, and so we can find the buttock, and then we can get to the line of being really quickly, gently, quickly. And so we can get to the head fairly quick, at least to give an indication of where we think we want the head. And then we'll reassess that and see how well we did with that. So finding the upper rib cage there, <clears throat> a little fuller now, coming over to the deltoid. Up uh, there we go now to the deltoid here. Okay, and then the head. Now we a little bit more accurate. Get the profile line of her head and her hair. And coming down the lower back. Notice I grab the other side to the abdomen, belly region. So 
So I cut my finger right where I, I draw. I drew I'm drawing so much lately that I put blister, drew blood on it. And I had to put a band-aid on it, so it kind of smudges the line work a little bit. I kind of liked it. It's a little bit different style. There's so many ways to gesture. Don't get caught up in, in too much in style. I like to emulate, again, some of my mentors, but in, there are different approaches to gesture, and I'll probably do some instructional things on that in the future. But this is a great way to teach kids or those who are young at heart and young at drawing the figure, no matter your age, kind of the beginning parts of good academic traditional gesture, and then you can do all kinds of other, other approaches. So this is just one of many approaches but I would say it's it's probably the best one to start out with until you get more advanced so it really emphasizes accuracy and aesthetic beauty and um, value and tone so combining mass gesture a little bit here and, and also uh, uh, the armature gesture and then quick gesturing too you got a little bit different style with with, uh, with these last four or five <clears throat> emphasizing the back of the leg here hamstring quad coming over that egg form you want to see it as an egg form you don't want to see it as just a shape otherwise you'll, you'll be more apt to be inaccurate quick contouring around both ways with the form and across the form <clears throat> or length and width getting the knee located and that egg form flexed I know why we're laughing. I had her, I had her, she, she had this other foot laying uh, on the ground, so I said, go ahead and lift that up a little bit. I forget what the joke was. We started to laugh, and so we got that on camera or on photo. Egg form of the calf, and then coming down to the ankle a little bit. You can feel the, the real strong division between the gastrocnemius and the, I believe, the uh, uh, fibularis longus and brevis there on that, that bottom side. Punch that straight slight line there where the sartorius is. <clears throat> Emphasize the cast shadow of the leg, other side of the leg, and then we get back to the top of the pelvic region. Emphasize form shadow, and then get the belly region coming across the lower rib cage and over. Really thinking volumetrically, volume, 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 as we're thinking about contouring and a gesture, con quick contour line. <clears throat> These have a softer kind of quality, a little bit more atmospheric style. And we see that knee area coming down to that medialis there, and on top to the rectus femoris, to the tendons of the knee, and then the patella coming over. And that's all kind of buried more of a tone and you can just put a mass gesture coming down and then start to feel the when the forms emerge that's, that's I love to do that and it gives you a little bit of tone as well as background wherever your lines uh, are defined the rest of it has a little bit of tone next to next to it coming down the gastrocnemius to the soleus down to the uh, calcaneus region by the Achilles tendon and then we have the foot triangular wedge the overturn and then the underturn with the arch and then that elongated part of those bones coming over which will overlap the arch and then down to the big elegant kind of big toe it's a beautiful foot pose there <clears throat> round out the barrel of the rib cage overturn here put her in a, a kind of a glossed tone she's kind of not in direct shadow not a massive shadow but not in massive light then her head gets more obscured of course by more shadow feeling the rhythm of the arch coming back down through and keep that going on we see the shoulder emerge but then come dip back down where the head is just a little to find her find her deltoid there so we're going to have to extend her head further yep see how we need to extend that just a little bit more so always double check your gesture scale and proportion to get as accurate as you can. <clears throat> Don't worry about missing a little bit. It's okay. We miss it all the time. It's an interpretive drawing technique. Academic. Uh, intuitive. Well, learned, learned approaches to constructing. Constructive method of, of making the figure. 
rather than obsessive measuring, which gets really stiff. And we'll put all that in shadows. We can just keep, keep that pretty much in shadow there. <clears throat> and we'll get a little cast shadow going on the far right of the leg against that, that little podium there, little stool, pedestal. Bring it down. Find its corner just to give some influence to that breast forming through there, raised up a bit. And so I've put uh, poses, the poses for this video in the back of the video so you can use them and repeat them as you're drawing with me and then you can have them larger as you're working with them. And I included a, a few more as a bonus. So again, a big shout out to our, our lovely new in instructional models. They did a great job. These kids are great. And we got, to, we got to pay them, which is wonderful too, which is what we want to do. So a little emphasis of the hand, the four short elbow, just a shape in through there. Not a whole lot of time left. Catch this elbow as it comes across <clears throat> the arm there. feel for the environment around her. <clears throat> Group that cast shadow and form shadow together. And get that pedestal just a little emphasized a little further. And that's about it. So the poses, you see the poses here. Enjoy these, and I'll catch you next time. You guys take care. Bye-bye.